In this video, we'll review some important characteristics about the cerebral hemispheres. It's important to remember that the cerebrum is divided into two hemispheres, the left and right hemisphere, by this fissure or deep depression known as the longitudinal fissure. Now we're going to be looking at three important characteristics of the cerebral hemispheres. Please feel free to grab a piece of paper and take some notes with me. The first important characteristic of the cerebral hemispheres is known as cerebral lateralization. Cerebral lateralization is the functional differences present between the left and right hemispheres of the brain. So let's look at some of these functional differences here. So over here, I'm going to list some characteristics that are typical of the left hemisphere of the brain. And then on the other side, I'll write some characteristics that are common of the right hemisphere of the brain. The left hemisphere of the brain is really important for both language production and language comprehension. Language production is achieved by the Broca's area of the frontal lobe. And it's going to allow for the creation of muscle patterns that are necessary for speech production. But the left hemisphere also contains an area that's really important for language comprehension, or in other words, understanding language, as well as producing coherent and grammatically correct sentences. And this location is known as Wernicke's area. Now again, typically Broca's area and Wernicke's area are only located in the left hemisphere, where we process verbal sounds. Another major function of the left hemisphere is analytical and sequential thinking. And this is thought to be very important in the math and sciences. Now the right hemisphere is more devoted to auditory processing of nonverbal sounds. And this is why we usually think of this as the music side of the brain. The right side of the brain is also better at recognizing faces and spatial relationships. And it's really important in intu intuitive and nonverbal, or in other words, visual thinking. So some people are better at thinking visually. So when they're thinking of things, they think of it in pictures or maybe even like little movies in their head. Whereas other people, when they're thinking of things, they're usually thinking in words. I just realized recently that, you know, I almost never think in images. And I don't even know if I'm capable of seeing images in my brain. So if someone tells me to think of an apple or something like that, like I can describe it, but I don't actually see an apple in my head. So... It's really interesting how some of us are able to perceive our world and think in these different ways. Now, this ability to recognize faces and spatial relationships and this ability for kind of intuitive or more emotional thinking tends to be associated more with the arts. And that's why we usually think of people that are more into the arts as using more of their right hemisphere when they're thinking. Another really important characteristic of the cerebral hemispheres is that each hemisphere receives sensory information from and sends motor commands to the opposite side of the body. This means that your left side of your brain is 
receiving and processing sensations felt on the right side of your body and your right side of the brain is receiving and processing sensations such as touch, vision, smell from the left side of your body. On top of that, the left side of your brain controls your right side of your body and the movements and your right side of the brain controls the movements on the left side of your body. The third really important point about each of the hemispheres is that each hemisphere functions independently from each other, except for a few white matter tracks between the two hemispheres. These white matter tracts are composed of bundles of axons that allows for the transmittance of nerve signals between the two hemispheres. Do you know what the white matter tracts are called that connect the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere? Do you know the general term for that? Well, they're called commissural tracts. So again, these white matter tracts or commissural tracts they send, send, they send signals between the hemispheres. Do you know the name of the largest commissural tract between the left and right hemisphere? Well, it's known as the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is located above the lateral ventricles. So let's look at an image of the brain here. Here you can see some of the connections between the right and left hemisphere. So on the left here, we see a mid-sagittal view of the brain. There is a connection right here between the two hemispheres known as the posterior commissure. It's really small. And then in the front here, we have the anterior commissure which is also really small. The corpus callosum is the largest connection. Again, it's above the lateral ventricles. And on the left, it's highlighted in yellow here. And then on the right, this is a coronal section of the brain and you can see it highlighted right here, connecting the two hemispheres. Now let's test your understanding of the differences between the left and the right hemisphere. I'm gonna read each one of these descriptions here, and I want you to tell me if it describes the left hemisphere or the right hemisphere. First, it detects smells from the right nasal cavity. That would be the left hemisphere. Controls movement in the left hand. That would be the right hemisphere. Processes images from our left visual field. That would be the right hemisphere detects the feeling of shapes from the right hand. That would be the left side. Which side of our brain is considered the science center? That would be the left side. Math, also the left. How about intuitive or emotional thinking? That would be the right side. Which side is thought to be most dominant when performing the arts? That would be the right side. Which side of the brain processes nonverbal sounds, such as music? That would be the right hemisphere. Which side of the brain has superior recognition of faces and spatial relationships? That would be the right hemisphere. Which side of the brain is responsible for analytical and systematic thinking? That would be the left hemisphere. And what about visual and nonverbal thinking? That would be the right hemisphere. And which half of our brain contains the language centers, such as Broca's area and Wernicke's area? That would be the left hemisphere. And what you can see from this is that damage in the left hemisphere is more likely to affect language than damage in the right hemisphere. 